Okay. We're able to record. Once again, um, good afternoon, everyone. I greet you all. I greet you, uh, Chief Mrs. Madam President, and uh, uh, Chief Mrs. Uh, Anita Okuribido, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Dr. Chen Zira from the Caribbean, thank you so much for taking the time. That's Nana Senior Dr. Chen Zira. And uh, I see the Honorable Lady Terry from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Dr. Chen is in St. Vincent in the Caribbean. And uh, minor correction, I'm currently in St. Croix in the Caribbean. St. Croix in the Caribbean. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I believe that Lady Terry is in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, she is. Uh, she could either be in the US, Brazil, she, she travels around. Uh, of course, uh, Madam President is in Nigeria currently. Uh, Dr. Remy Alapo is in the United States, in New York. And uh, Lady Upeme Okon is in um, is in uh, uh, Washington, uh, excuse me, uh, is in Maryland. Is that right? Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> Maryland. Yes. Um, and uh, so um, I think Eddie is present. Eddie is in Rwanda. Hello, Eddie. Great to see you. Eddie is our president in Rwanda. And um, so glad that he's here today with his colleague, the wonderful Lady Vadayan. She's also here from Rwanda. Please say hello to people, Lady V. I hope you're here. And um, I'm here. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, let me just see who else is here at this moment. I think I saw Kobina, Kobina Longdon. A remarkable youth director, wonderful, vibrant young man. Hi, Kobina, how are you? Refreshing to connect with you, Dr. Wale, and greetings to you all, your honors, and everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we also have uh, His Royal Majesty, the President of uh, DR Congo Superior Council of Traditional and Customary Authorities uh, in, in the DRC. Uh, is also the president of the African Union Traditional Authorities. Uh, welcome, sir. It's uh, wonderful to have you here with us. I believe you are from the Kotla platform. Uh, we're so grateful that you are here. So uh, I, I hope I've covered uh, those who are present at the moment. There will be others joining us, uh, but um, uh, we are uh, about to start. So I'm going to ask us to do a very interesting thing today. I know that we also, we always have things on our mind. Um, and I want to make sure that the Ghanaians are here. Uh, okay, I know in some areas they have a problem with network because of the weather. Okay, and um, okay, uh, Dr. Remy, can you please uh, keep an eye on the attendees? I think some people are complaining that yeah, they're sure. here and they are on hold. I don't see anybody on hold though, but uh, Okay. All right. So, okay. Um, I'll uh, just go ahead now and we start so that uh, Dr. Remy will take care of all the attendees that are joining us. Thank you, Dr. Remy. Now, uh, everyone, I know that we all, we all have so many things on our minds, so many things, things that are related to this meeting and things that are not related to this meeting. So I want us to do one exercise today, please. Um, I want you to take a piece of paper, pick up your pen, okay? And write in bullet points, things that are on your mind and you don't want to forget. 
So I want you to put on that page things that are currently on your mind that you don't want to forget. If you don't have a paper and you have your phone, open the notepad and put this, all the things on your mind currently that you don't want to forget, put it in bullet points. I'm gonna give you two minutes to do that. That's a very important exercise because of the importance of the program we're about to embark on, okay? Okay. All right. Got about a minute more. Just do this exercise, please. You'll find it very important. All the things you don't want to forget. Okay. Yeah. Let us assume that you have finished. Um, Okay. All right. Okay, so I assume you have written down all the things that are in your mind, okay? Now, I'd like you to please close that paper, turn it over, because you may need the other side of this paper to jot things down. So once you have finished it, if it's your phone, close it now. Uh, make sure you save it, save all this. Uh, and once you have done that, I expect that you have nothing else on your mind. And you can no longer, you have no worries now that things you have on your mind that may get lost. So that means we have a clean slate. So close this document, turn it upside down or put it away somewhere and open a new sheet because we are going to be talking about something very fresh for most of us and very, very important for us to take note of. Thank you very much for this exercise. All right, I will be sharing my screen intermittently so you can follow uh, what we have, okay? Um, today we are going to be discussing the AVAWA, that's A-V-A-W-A, -A -A. okay? The avower. The avower is the Anti Violence Against Women Act. First of all, before I continue, uh, I ask for your forgiveness. I didn't mention you, Quirit. Quirit is a young lady from a uh, student. Uh, in Uganda, who's doing some remarkable, remarkable uh, program on SRM, and um, we'll get to know her uh, soon. But she's uh, she's here with us. Welcome. And anyone else that I omit to mention, uh, just please forgive me. I know that there are others who are going to be joining us, but I wanted to make sure that I acknowledge those who are punctual. Now. Uh, <clears throat> so, we are going to be talking about the Anti-Violence Against Women Act. Um, as I'm sharing my screen, you can all see uh, what we have. And I will begin with this. Okay. So the question is, what is Anti-Violence Against Women Act? Um, the, many of us know the struggle that women face in the world. Okay? 
And we also know the effort that's been made over time. It's been so long, hundreds of years, that women at different level in different societies have been making effort to have a collective recognition of women's strengths and humanity. Now, this is a very concerning struggle of women around the world. And specifically in Africa, due to so many reasons, uh, our cultures, even though it's pro-women, it's, it's very, uh, in most cases, are, are maternal and uh, but due to various engagement and various uh, interventions have changed uh, and has also become oppressive to women, as you know. But we all agree that perhaps in the last 10 years, we've made some progress. We've made progress due to uh, the universal laws that were created, right? For instance, the, um, the United Nations uh, CEDAW, uh, we know the movement of the CSW that's founded, that was founded. We, we, we are now in the 67th year of the uh, Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, in that process, uh, we know that uh, the United Nations has created a treaty called CEDAW. The CEDAW is the C-E-D-A-W. Now, CEDAW is... Um, a treaty that was commissioned by the United Nations uh, to various experts to come up with laws uh, that are important, with laws that are important to um, to to uh, bring up to speed the advancement of women. Now you, you got on. You got to be thinking. Okay, so you know, uh, especially uh, some men, most men will think, oh, you know, there's, you know, uh, I'm good. I don't, I don't have problem with women issues and so on. But society does, and this is why uh, these type of treaties were created in the first place. Now, um, allow me to uh, put up my bearings so I can. Um, follow you here, and, uh, you can follow me on this presentation. Okay. Okay, so I hope you can all see my screen. And um, what we, uh, as mentioned, uh, so the CSW has been, of course, uh, created to have a gathering every year whereby all the women associations around the world can come together and exchange ideas and, and uh, exchange notes as to where the challenges are and how far they have come, and what progress they have, what challenges they have, uh, et cetera. So, in that process, as mentioned, the uh, CEDAW was created. Uh, the CEDAW is the commission on the or the committee, uh, 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 the, the the committee of the um, uh, in the committee uh, uh, for elimination of discrimination against women. Sorry, I'm having, again, I should be taking the notes and closing the notes because there's so many uh, things that I needed to cover for you quickly. Um, and I want to make sure uh, that um, we're able to, to cover a whole lot. So you can ask questions and uh, we can all uh, have um, a good uh, resultative meetings. Some of the things we want to do today is to see how we want to form organize ourselves in approaching this Anti-Violence Against Women Act. Now, before I tell you what that really is, I'm giving you the background of these laws and all these programs that have been created, right? 
and the progress that they have made, especially the challenges that they are faced with, which is why the Anti-Violence Against Women Act came into being. So the CEDAW is very encompassing. All the countries in the world have signed it, have ratified it, uh, except for maybe two or three. Uh, right now we have 189 countries around the world have signed this document that they are going to adopt the CEDAW Treaty. The CEDAW is a guide for all nations about the challenges women face and how to eliminate violence as well as promote the advancement of women. Now, the advancement of women is essential to all countries, to all communities, to all families. Um, we could go on and on about why that's important, but what is key here to understand is that no country in the world can survive on relying on the expertise and capacity of male alone. That means that for any country to advance, they must make sure that women are equally empowered. Now, if you look at the leadership across the board in Africa, you'll see that we have a long way to go. To me, which is one of the reasons that we're lagging behind. This is why this exercise is extremely, extremely important. Okay? So, if you, um, if you, so, you know, um, we have um, a board director, um, Dr. Surendra Koshik, who so many years ago, like maybe 15 years ago, uh, uh, has conducted so many um, lectures on the challenges that women face in various societies and the advancement that are necessary to make. And he explained that if you could imagine what it means not to empower women in your country or your society, he explained that there is an opportunity cost that is essential for every country's growth. And, and we know that by now. So. I won't belabor the need to empower women. We all know that that is essential. The question is how? So with all the treaties on the table and all the, we have the CEDAW, uh, there is another treaty for the African nation, specifically to the African nation. That is the Maputo Protocol. This Maputo Protocol was agreed upon by all the African states in the African Union that they are going to empower the women in their country, make sure they are treated fairly, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we know that there are many types of challenges that women face. Uh, it comes from cultural traditions, but also at the family level at home, where you have domestic violence up until the work, until the public sphere, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we, 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 we know these challenges uh, that... Um, that women face, okay? So the, um, so we know that all these treaties cover all of these areas on how to help mitigate those challenges. But most of these treaties are not domesticated. They're not domesticated. Domesticated means that, yes, when they go to the UN or when they go to the African Union, it's easy for any representative or even, you know, leader or president to sign any treaty. But signing that treaty doesn't mean that the treaty is accepted in the country or that it can be made effective in the country. Okay? Now, I hope you're following me here. And that means that we are boxed in a situation. The UN is designed not to interfere in domestic affairs. The UN cannot do that. And I assume the African Union cannot do that either. They can advise nations, but what happens within the nation is up to the nations. So when all these treaties are given out to um, 
all these when all these treasures are given out to um, the nations, so they take it back to their countries, but they again not able to domesticate it for various reasons. First of all, perhaps um, in the particular country they need to have um, they need to have a local legal process. Okay, uh, there's got to be a legislative process in order to do that. That means that, and you know, when in a political situation, there are different parties trying to prove, prove uh, pull different agendas. For this, there are so many reasons that all these laws are not domesticated. So very, very few countries have been able to domesticate the CEDAW uh, treaty. Now, this is a big problem. Because as we noticed, especially after the pandemic or during the pandemic, there was a very sharp increase in violence against women. Now, keep in mind, violence against women really means that the country performance is greatly affected. You gotta put this into perspective, okay? So in order to solve this problem, uh, a few years ago, uh, many of us came together to look into the situation, how we can help move the CEDAW and the Maputo Protocol uh, forward. Okay. This type of movement started long, uh, just after the, um, uh, the Beijing um, uh, uh, meeting, what we call the... Uh, uh, the Beijing meeting, the, the meeting in Beijing in uh, uh, 1995, I believe. So now, the anti-violence against women is designed to study the country's constitution, that there's got to be a way that we can connect this treaty to the country in a way that is not intrusive and does not have to go through an additional legislative process. A process that's gonna overhaul uh, the, the country's standards or the integrity of its sovereignty, okay? So for instance, in Nigeria, you have a constitution that is not gender sensitive. This constitution means that when we say a constitution is not gender sensitive, it means that it doesn't discriminate. Now, we've got to keep this in mind. It doesn't discriminate between men and women. So they call it a person, which is fine. It sounds very good, but there's a trick behind that because men and women are very different and there are different conditions. You know, women do get pregnant and they do, there's a whole lot of structures that, that makes the position of a woman different from that of a man. So it's very critical that every constitution is gender sensitive. Now, the reason that the Nigerian constitution is perhaps not gender sensitive is because it has a religious overtone, the right to practice religion. And the right to practice religion means that religion, if in this case, supersedes the right of women. A man can marry four wives, that's fine if the women agree, but then how to treat the woman? So you have laws like Sharia law that has uh, different approaches to women entitlement and advancement of women. They are greatly conflicted by the CEDAW treaty, okay? So because of this, uh, the country finds itself boxed into a corner on how to make its constitution gender sensitive. Our goal is to make the constitution gender sensitive. Now, Ghana has one of the most prolific, one of the most, uh, uh, um, uh, um, what, what do you call it? One of, the, one, of the, one of the best, let's just put it simple, one of the best constitution uh, in Africa for women. Ghana states clearly that it will you know, what it will do for uh, its women. So all these, um, you know, it's, it's, again, I'll, I'll give you an example of what a uh, constitution uh, looks like for 
um, let's see, uh, for African nations. Let me let me find it for you. So. Okay, so in every single African constitution, maybe not all as mentioned, but most, there is a provision for women. Now I want you to pay attention to what I'm sharing with you. There is a provision for women. That is that in the constitution, there's a promise that the government says, we're going to do our best to understand the challenges that women face in our country, and we're going to do our best to address them. It's in different languages, but it is there as a provision in the constitution. So we made a painstaking effort to research each of these constitution to know that this exists. The only problem is following through. Now, the problem of following through is because women in the country, especially women organizations, are perhaps distracted or are not pushing that enough. It's just sufficient that it is there. However, following through on that provision is a challenge, which is where, again, the AVAWA comes in. So what the AVAWA does, the Anti-Violence Against Women Act, it's a law about the law. So it is saying that government must make and provide sufficient proof that it understands the challenges that women face in its country and it's going to address them and how it's going to address them with how much money is going to address them. thank you please put your hands together for the dg all right uh, can you please mute your microphone if you have a question uh, let me know Dr. Remy, please keep an eye on the uh, on the chat in case there's any questions. Um, okay. So, all right, thank you. Uh, I hope everyone is following me thus far. Um, we're going to have rooms to have uh, some uh, discussions. But, um, okay, let me... Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just going to go quickly to um, this page. This is a book that uh, we, uh, the African Views and many of our colleagues also from different organizations. Uh, it's a book that uh, contributed to by uh, 100 women. Um, and uh, we came together to address the various challenges that women face around the world. And uh, We, um, we were also the organization that connected the um, traditional rulers to be um, the essential partners in eliminating uh, harmful traditional practices against women. Uh, we'll get to that in, in a bit. And that, of course, has to do with early child marriage and female genital mutilations. Um, so there are, okay, this is, okay, yes. So in the constitution, now regarding the treaties, remember we have treaties, right? Again, the treaties uh, are existing, but they, they have no way in getting into a constitution. And what we are saying is that those treaties, while they exist and while they are ratified, that's good because they have very, very good laws. They help us to understand challenges women face at large 
but those challenges are different, especially in the African context, by society, by cultures, by community, by class, in so many various levels. So it's not like a cookie cutter, like a one size fit all situation. So in order for us to grapple with that situation, this is where Avawa comes into play. The Avawa is asking the government to understand the challenges that women face in their society, particularly in their society. That means that the government is forced to work through its Ministry of Women with the various women rights organizations and CSOs, uh, civil society organizations that are focusing on women issues. And together they can craft out a very comprehensive plan about the challenges that women face in their country. Now, what we're saying here is that there's an urgent need. There's an urgent need to advance women in every country in the African world. Okay. And what we're talking about here is that, yes, of course, there are a lot of very smart women around who, are, who don't need this type of environment, but there are a lot more who, who do, okay? Um, especially the rural women. We have a lot of rural women. We have a lot of young women. We have a lot of, we have a, we have a society, we have a population that needs this type of engagement because our advancement, our civilization, our growth depend on them. You see? So I'm just gonna give you a good example of uh, some constitutions here. Um, the constitution of Egypt says, the state commits to the protection of women against all forms of violence and ensures women's empowerment to reconcile the duties of a woman towards the family and her work requirements. Now you see, that is a very convoluted language, right? It's a very convoluted language and it could mean anything. But what he's saying, we do understand. However, we need to understand, we need to articulate it, we need to make it clear. So what Avower is saying is that we need a comprehensive analysis of what that means, what that entails in tactile form. That means that we need the, um, the, the organizations that are working on women issues to be able to say that these are the problems that women are facing and that the Ministry of Women has this full information and this made the government completely uh, 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 involved and preview of it so that the government can provide solutions working again through the Ministry of Women and the CRO and the WROs to have this comprehensive plan that's going to be followed through. Now, the AVAWA has four components, four components, okay? The AVAWA has four components. So the first one is the act, and I've just explained the act to you. Okay, please mute your microphone. Thank you for now. Thank you, please. So the Avawa Act, which is the Anti-Violence Against Women Act, is this comprehensive plan. Now, how do we make that happen? We know how to create laws, okay? You need to write a bill. You need to propose the bill. You need to push the bill across the floor. You need to have, uh, you know, a member of the parliament second the notion, uh, second the motion, and 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 we need to have it voted through. This is easy in some societies and some nations, but it's not easy in some other nations, especially a nation like Nigeria, where it's very male dominated and also religious uh, driven. So you can imagine the challenge that we face. In Ghana, this is a very good law that I think that the Ghanaians would embrace because they already have the platform for it, okay? But the women in Ghana have to work together to make this happen. 
So this is why we are partnering with FIDA, which is the Federation of International Women Lawyers across the world. Uh, they have um, chapters in perhaps all countries. And uh, so we're working with them to make sure that we can present a bill to each of these parliaments and push it through. And we're going to do all that we can to make that happen. Now, that's just one of the four components that is necessary. The second component is the network of service providers. The service providers are all the women service providers that exist in the country. That is the various organizations that are providing services to women, various services, whether it's economic, health, recovery, all kinds of stuff. You can imagine all the whole spectrum. We want to make sure that there is a directory and accessible database of all the services in every community, to every city, to every nation, and starting from those nations that we are working with. As I mentioned, we are starting in three nations, which is Ghana, Nigeria, and Rwanda. Okay, now, that's the second component, the directory which is going to come out in an electronic format as well as a website and a print format so that women can have that. This list is very encompassing. It includes health section, health sector, education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We have a template for it. We've been working on this for a long time. Now we just got to make sure that we perfect it and it's self uh, updating that is new organization can always update it. We will verify them to make sure that the services are, they do what they are supposed to do and they are not exploiting the women, okay? So that is a component of the ABAWA because it is with this organization that you can tell the government what is available in a particular area and what is missing. So the government can identify gaps of services and be able to work with the uh, WROs and the CSOs right, and the Ministry of Women, okay? This is all within the above. The third component is the association network of all the women in the community. You need the women in the community because they are the standard, they are the proxies for the services. So it is through them that we know that the services, all our effort and the services that's been provided is actually working and what is missing and what is necessary to update or improve, all of those things across the spectrum. Now, we have had a test run of all these associations and I can tell you they are wonderful. And the women, they love them because we are able to create cooperatives, we're able to create, explore their creativity, bring them together and help them to develop in their various communities. We're able to create um, uh, uh, identifications for them. This was way before all these NIM programs that they have now in Ghana and Nigeria, which they've already had in Rwanda for several years. So this type of uh, 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 identification is very necessary, especially for rural women, to be able to become formally uh, included in, in the economic system. Uh, so that helps us to move um, women from the informal sector into the formal sector. And I want to tell you that this also helps us with ending child labor and so many other things that we have been able to do and can continue to do, which will work directly with the network and the network within the Abawa. I hope this is clear and you'll get to ask me all these questions later. The fourth component of the Avawa is what we call the Pink Africa. That means that after all our effort over the year, at the end of the year, we do an award program. This award program is what we call the Pink Africa Award. It is to encourage the continuity of the Avawa. Okay, it's also to encourage people to support it. It's also to ensure that it is working and it is effective, okay? This award system is in 13 categories. I will not enumerate those categories now, but you just need to know 
that will give up this to make sure that people are encouraged to uh, continue to make this happen. Now, these are the whole set of the cycle of the anti-violence against women uh, concept. Now, you should know that with this system, we capture with very little, if any at all, omission of any type of challenges that women face in every single community. Because we have the law that backs it up, the laws that make accountable for any intentional violence against women, whether it's domestic, whether it's cultural, religious driven, whatever, that we are able to back it up with the law and make strategic effort to put an end to it. In Ghana here, you have troposy. It's a long system and people have tried to, to end it. It's against the law, but it's still being practiced. Same as uh, genital mutilation for the female. And so on and so forth. We can put an end to this. We can put an end to it in one year with this of our system. Forever put it out with the Avawa system. Okay. We've done it in small cases. We know we can do it on a big scale. We know how to do it. So, and you can see that with this system, we're able to capture that. We can make sure there's a strong law enforcement and investigation capacity focused on that. We can target sensitive areas. We can eliminate it, exterminate it. And we can provide a way forward for a world of full humanity for the women in our society, especially women and girls. We can introduce gender harmony education into the pedagogic systems so that in the school systems, we can learn how to harmonize the gender, respect the gender, the differences, and, and grow together and have a qualitative life in our countries and in our communities. So this is the vision of the Anti-Violence Against Women Act. Now there's a whole lot more to this, but I know I have, uh, we, we have our colleagues here from Rwanda who are going to be working in Rwanda to, to move this forward. They have identified some cities where we're going to have uh, the Women Association the directory is going to be national and we're going to work with FIDA to put this law on the floor. Okay, um, let me at this point show you uh, the, the chart that we have uh, put together here. Okay, I hope you can see this chart. Um, okay. Uh, Okay, so we have um, Mrs. Anita Okuribido, who is uh, our president in Nigeria for the Nigeria Network. Um, and uh, we have uh, Lady Jessica Botema, who's going to be uh, working closely with her. Uh, we have our VP for Media Health. We have uh, Dr. Chenzira, who's going to be doing research, but also going to be our international program manager for the whole anti-violence against women across countries, okay? So we have uh, uh, this various, we have Dr. Remy, who's going to be uh, working on an education program. You can imagine what that we have to bring a lot of educational programs to the association. I didn't go into all those details, but that's inclusive. This includes, you know, making sure that all the challenges that they have, all their needs are met, whether it's educational, health-wise, uh, hygiene, uh, economic, all of those things. This is how we make our culture more civilized, okay? Um, we have uh, uh, Pastor Esther, who is uh, going to be working in the Accra section. Um, we want to, uh, Hear your thoughts about how, um, what we can do in the Accra section, how we can work 
with other uh, regions and areas. Uh, we also have uh, Sister Esther who's going to be working around the Kofuridu area. Um, and as mentioned, we have our Rwandans who are going to be working in various sections of uh, Rwanda. We'll get them to, we'll get to hear from them as to uh, what they envision and how they uh, uh, plan to work with women and also the gathering of information uh, and digitalizing and making it available for the public. Um, as mentioned, uh, we have uh, a president in uh, uh, Nigeria who is um, a very, very strong voice for women advancement. She's connected to some of the uh, strongest women there, some of the strongest women organizations who have pledged to work with us. So um, I think I have some of the uh, letters here uh, to share with you. Um, okay, just uh, going through some of uh, this year and okay so we also have Lady Ukweme who is our direct coordinator to FIDA uh, she's our legal expert and legal advisor um, and she um, has worked with FIDA she works with FIDA and she works with us so she's a good bridge to making sure that FIDA is on the table that we can we can write a bill that can be presented to the uh, to the to the floor to to the parliament or the cabinet and so on and so forth. Um, all right. So I've said so much. I believe that uh, uh, most of the things I've said uh, have been understood. I would like now to hear your questions. Before I do that, I just want to acknowledge our president uh, from uh, in Ghana is here. Uh, welcome and now to uh, now to the royalty and the president of our organization in Ghana. So glad you're here. Um, all right, so uh, I will um, okay. I now open the floor to any questions, any query that you might have. Thank you very much. Hello, can I talk? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. I'm the King Fum of the RC, the president of uh, Transit Authority. Uh, I see that in your structure you have the Queen uh, Nana window that you yeah. say Beatrice the Sun that I read there. I just want to understand what is exactly a uh, function. Only liaison of uh, or another, another things. Because uh, okay. I, I saw your uh, link in our in our groups, then I asked to others to follow. That's why I'm myself there. I just Thank want you. to understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me show you this. Um, uh, so uh, Nana Winder uh, is a partner, and she's also uh, a member of our board in Ghana. Um, and she's also a queen mother and she works with Aklin. Uh, so she's also part of um, Kotla, okay? So like the role of traditional rulers, uh, as you can see in this picture that I'm showing, is to help end um, harmful traditional gender-based practices. As you know, they exist in many of our communities in many of our societies, right? So the role of the kings, and, and I know that you, you, this is what you are doing at Kotla, but we, we are the ones that introduced this idea to actually work with kings many, many years ago, and it got adopted by the United Nations. So we have made great advancement in this area 
of working with traditional rulers and even spiritual uh, 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 leaders to help end uh, violence against women. Um, so her role is is to is to help uh, extend and promote the avowa in traditional places to help bring traditional rulers to the table so we can have the discussion on how this strategy will work. How it will work in the favor of the community as well as to the benefit of the, of the palace, of the kingdom. So these are some of the events that we have done in the past. As you can see, you may recognize some of the colleagues there. Okay, uh, working with various queens um, and, and making sure that the topic is on the table, uh, making sure that we can identify some of the common and uncommon harmful traditional practices. Now, the reason the traditional rulers are on the table, of course, is because of traditional practices. Now, of course, not all of our traditional practices are harmful. As a matter of fact, we love our traditions. But there are certain ones that are historic in nature and that continue till this day, and it harms women unnecessarily. These are the ones that we want to make sure that we are all on the same page, that we can bring an end to it. Because as mentioned earlier, the growth of the woman is growth of the community, growth of the family is the growth of the community, is the growth of the kingdom itself. So there are many things, and as mentioned, they are different from one kingdom to the other, from one culture to the other. So it's important that we engage traditional rulers in this. So Nana Awendo is, uh, is, is uh, a proponent of that and a partner in this process. That's why, sir. Okay, yes, thank you. But uh, I just want to be uh, sure, and uh, I think I can tell you that uh, she's in all of, our African structures, and she is one of in Ghana who represents uh, Absolutely. the people. Then, Absolutely. Uh, if any time you want to work with us, you can see with her, no problem. She's thank with you. us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We're, we're already thank working you. together, Your Majesty. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're already working together. We're working together through King Adidabo. And, and many of your colleagues. So we are ready, we are ready together, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Any other question, please? Um, I would, uh, otherwise I would ask um, uh, Eddie and uh, uh, Vadayan to talk about um, the plans and the understanding in Rwanda. Uh, just before uh, I yield the floor to them, I want to tell you that Rwanda is one of the best countries for women advancement in the world, not just in Africa. And that's one of the reasons that we picked on Rwanda. So the things that happens in Rwanda are exemplary. And therefore, Rwanda is the place that we're going to bring the Avawa first to the floor. That's where we're going to introduce it. So we're going to introduce it in the first year of starting this program in Rwanda, because the fruit, that's a very low hanging fruit there. We don't think it's going to be easy because in as much as Rwanda has the highest population of women in the world in its parliament, most of the women are in the lower house. We need to bring more women into the upper house. Um, and I think that's something that's desirable. Um, whatever reason why that's not happening, we hope that Maya Diane is going to educate us and uh, talk about how uh, we can improve situations, not only for top women, but also uh, women who are at the bottom or the lower parts of the uh, foot ladder, uh, the foot ladder, the foot chain, and uh, especially rural women. Please, Maya Diane and uh, Eddie. If I may, this is Terry from Trinidad and Tobago. I hope Hi, you're Terry. hearing me okay. My hand has been raised for a bit. So thank you, sister, for acknowledging that. Um, and thank you, Wale, for setting the, the stage for the, this discussion. 
Um, I note that the invitation I received, and, and rightly so, you said this is for African nations. However, we who are living, are Africans living in the diaspora, diaspora, believe that we are part of this. And, and, and you, you rightly stated that the majority of our countries have already um, signed and or ratified the CEDAW Convention, which is one of the things that, that makes us come together. It's one of the things we have in common. You also rightly stated that, um, that your approach um, may be to introduce a constitutional act, a constitutional act. And we all want, we should acknowledge that asking a country to change or amend its constitution requires the entire nation to vote for or against it. And that can be a, 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 a long and laborious process. Um, however, I think that the avowal um, can be introduced, like you've, you've said before, um, in various ways through different uh, f factions of the, the our communities, as you pointed out, the, um, the um, traditional leaders, for instance. I am very aware of the work that's being done in Nigeria with UN Women and other women's organizations to working together with the traditional leaders to begin changing the, the, the uh, perspective on, 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 on inclusivity and what that looks like and the role that women and girls play and how they should benefit in that respect. But I bring this all back to the CEDAW because the very first, um, and CEDAW, as you said, is the, the, the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And the very first article, it, it consists of 30 articles, the first through the 16th are the substantive articles of the convention, which the very first, the, the very first article, article one, speaks to one, what this discrimination means. So it provides a definition of discrimination. And two, one of the one of the um, guidelines is a framework. So clearly, you rightly said again, the UN can't dictate to, to sovereign countries what to do in their country, but they certainly provide a framework under which these sovereign countries can then work toward the advancement and elimination, advancement of women and the elimination of all forms of discrimination. And one of those areas in, in Article 1 of the CEDAW is to talk about um, a, a policy on gender development. And it's, it's normally known as, or, 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 or loosely phrased as the gender policy. And you would see that being highlighted in many countries, where is the gender policy, or we've just approve the gender policy in parliament, et cetera, et cetera. And so the challenge then is to look what, at what is written within that policy and how that policy actually do advance the women and girls. And I will end my comment by saying, while there are some countries like mine, Trinidad and Tobago, that have not adopted a gender policy, a framework or a policy draft document has been presented to parliament. And within that document, there are specific areas that have been delineated to or, or highlighted to advance and eliminate discrimination against women and girls. And the gender division in, within Trinidad and Tobago have, have already, and they've been doing it for years, working on aspects of the policy. So while a policy may not be in place, and we, of course, the policy is, is the law. So when you or when it turned the policy into law, you not only get the governments being having to acquiesce to it, but you also have private sector as well. The, the, the public in general has to acquiesce to it. So we're still ad advancing the need for an actual act, a policy, a law. But in lieu of that, we can't sit and wait for it to happen. So we continue our advocacy. We continue our work within the country and also extend our work through to through the region. So. Um, the, the Caribbean region, there are many organizations that are working, all women's organizations, to my understanding, uses the CEDAW as the foundation for the work that they do, because they point to different aspects of the articles in the CEDAW convention that speaks to the specific work that we do. Many, many organizations focus on um, elim elimination of violence against women, meaning battery, physical violence. But we want to stress that violence against women and girls comes in many forms. It's not just physical, it's psychological, it's financial, it's emotional, it's, it's, it's women being not having access to, to advancement, whether it be jobs through education, et cetera, et cetera. And the beauty of the convention is that it, it 
each article addresses all of these things specifically, including rural women and what the country governments or states should be doing to advance women under all of these um, articles and in all of these instances. So I see that, um, I, I say all this to say that the avowal should be, can be working hand in hand with the CEDAW convention that's already been, been um, signed and or ratified by our countries and it strengthens, it strengthens the avowal moving forward. Thank you for the time. Thank you so very much. We, we speak in the same language. Uh, I just need to make one clarification. I agree with everything that you said, but there's a little more that I think we should add. Um, first of all, the Avawa adheres to CEDAW. Uh, the Avawa is the missing link for CEDAW, if you, if you look at it in the right way. Uh, just like you said, it's difficult to, for, for, for CEDAW to be domesticated. Right, and in Africa, as you know, CEDAW is not the only uh, treaty. There are many more, and, and including the Maputo Protocol, which focuses on this issue. But they are facing the same problem. So with Avawa, we can easily ease the CEDAW into the law because if the, the CEDAW are policies that ensures um, that that women. Uh, uh, gets to do and all the all the statuses that are necessary. And these are the things that, you know, uh, the BROs and, and CSOs are going to be doing in bringing this into the fold, making sure that the CEDAW protocols are observed. Um, so I would say Avawa actually exists because of CEDAW. So of course, Avawa is predicated on CEDAW and the Avawa is to ease CEDAW, you know. the the, the only thing that the avowal that I'm afraid of regarding the avowal is the I vow from the um, uh, from the the I vow is from the uh, human rights um, uh, organization um, and it's specifically designed against developing nations, especially the African nation. Um, and they are pushing for the IVAWA in the United States. If the IVAWA goes through, it will be a threat to the African nations, okay? So it's very important that we have something in place like the IVAWA, which ensures that African nations are able to take care of, the, of their business. This is very key, okay? And they do so in conjunction and recommendations of the CEDAW. Once the Avawa is in place, I see no, I, there's, there's, there's no reason why we can have the CEDAW uh, endorsed. That, that's for sure. Now, in regards to the Caribbean, uh, you know that we face similar issues uh, and it is very possible uh, to promote the same agenda. I think the situation in Trinidad and Tobago is very similar to perhaps the one in Ghana, okay? Um, you know, you, you've had a prime minister, uh, who, uh, a female prime minister in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, that's yet to be realized in Ghana, but that is, you know, that, that shows that there is some, some kind of situation there that is not as bad. But you also know that among the populace that we have a very heightened sentiment uh, of, of anti-violence against women. You wrote the article for the uh, 100 Pieces of Solutions. You remember about the Japanese lady. Uh, those type of things, how do we ease into the populace and make sure we have a policy or a situation that would work for the people? So I think, I think we must explore how we can uh, extend the Avawa in the Caribbean. As far as far as I'm concerned, I think you know this is this is a no-brainer. I think we should push it, and I think it would help to to promote the work uh, to promote CEDAW. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump in one second more and say that, sure. um, and you know, where we can, obviously, we've been doing it for years now through you, but where we can work together, we actually are and want to continue that relationship. 
We have extended the work that we do, we meaning CEDAW, CICOT, the CEDAW Committee of Trinidad and Tobago, and we partner with many of our African brothers and sisters around the globe, but are also on the continent. So we're very excited about that. I'll say one last thing, and that is that I am now slated to attend the um, WD2023, that's Women Deliver 2023 in Rwanda in um, in, in July in Kigali. And I look forward to hopefully meeting our brothers and sisters who are on the call today who will be participating in that event. And even if you're not particip participating in the event while I'm there, I hope that we will have an opportunity to meet and have some and advance the dialogue that we've started today. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Yes, that, that is the situation. And uh, I'm going to ask you next, when you're speaking uh, again, make sure you turn on your video. We'd love to see your beautiful face, please. Your inspiration. But my photo is there, so you can see my photo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank you. So uh, let's yield to our colleagues in Rwanda. Um, if you guys uh, please take the floor. Thank you. Eddie, don't forget to unmute. You're still muted. Oh, there you go. Are you hearing me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wari. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks goes to everyone who participated or attending. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. We're, uh, we're smart, smart and very uh, on point. I will not delay uh, my, my brief uh, discussion, not presentation, will be on the importance of this project. And uh, my sister, Badrin, will be talking about the women achievement or the, the gender in Rwanda, but also in the brief. So this project will, will calibrate, will bring more life, will bring more fresh to the actors, to awaken more actors, bring on board actors, the National Women's Council, uh, in a game or gender monitoring office, all the actors, the vice, the vice deputy senate, the president of the deputy senate, the, the, the president of, of, of parliament, all the actors, the minister of gender, all those are the, the key actors in this project will be on board following, uh, following, following up either Maputo, either Beijing, conference of 90, I think 95, or if not 97, I don't remember the year. Uh, since it was, by then I was, I was, I was in the, yeah. So we really anticipating and looking forward how this project will gonna be a case study to awaken other bodies, either UN, either government, but the case, just a, a small, small highlight, maybe at the uh, at the end, you know, we will we, we, we do that mostly. Fifty-four percent is national parliament. Out of uh, out of um, eighty zero eight zero eight, those are the member of parliament. So sixty-four percent. Uh, women, including the president of of, of lower chamber or, or the parliament, and the had and the had deputy. In Rwanda, how is in in terms of gender? Every almost every post, be the private sector, or be the government, you must have gender sensitive gender gender in the position. If the President, for example, or prime minister is a man, the, sec the second in the command must be a woman. There is no question whether you are mayor, whether you are governor, whether you are headmaster, whether you are principal, whether you are vice chancellor, that is how the hierarchy, the constitution says. There is no, if you are, for example, you are district mayor in the US, what they call a county, and the mayor is a man, 
there is a post that, that is only elected 30% as constitution says, has to be um, uh, has to be voted only by 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 women, and that from that post one has to be a vice mayor, and then there is a general general election, general where women will will compete in elections also has to be a mayor. So if a, if a mayor is a, a lady or a woman, then the deputy has to be a man. So that's how the constitution stipulates. If we speak is uh, if a Senate of the Parliament, for example, for them, they are not many. What you what in the US or in Ghana or Nigeria, I think they call a high chamber. Here we call them which are Senate. They are 24 in a number. And uh, the four, the four, yeah, the four, not six, the four, has to be appointed by the president. And these were pre presented by the president. I'll just not put by more, more, more not did it, but I want to say how our constitution is. So the president has to, to, to vote or to appoint the four to the Senate who are from uh, disadvantaged, disadvantaged people, for example, disabled, and uh, maybe from the High Council of Education, uh, maybe from the youth. Uh, so those four people has to be 20 can be elected from different uh, provinces, but the four present has to nominate them according how how that election went. Maybe some people are, are disadvantaged or some district are disadvantaged, then the president has, has a, a prerogative to appoint, but mostly disabled or people are, have who don't have eyes, who are blind or who are kind of uh, people with the disabilities, or people, for example, you have what we call, um, I don't know, here we don't use it, what people use to call pygmies, uh, pygmies or bush people. Here we don't call them that, because all we are Rwandans or we are Rwandese. But in a bright way, the president knows that this society is weak, so he has a point to one, uh, one lady, or uh, most ladies from that side. So, so the number is not big, and I don't remember how many women are there, but it close to 50, to 50. So back to the to the project, it will be very, very vital for the district we mentioned, which have more could be seen home of uh, home violence or GD, GBV. And another one picked by by also Benadine. Those are other districts which are more kind of exemplary, if my call it, has good cases in records. So those are the three, four districts we picked to be to implement this project. And the governors and the mayor and the regional police officer will be among our, our, our team to see our project uh, and also to be giving some talk and uh, to follow up how this, this project is useful to the country. So we are really excited. Rwanda follows everything, every inch. So I know it will be good, good news to everyone. Um, we are very, very gender sensitive as many people know, but also we are looking forward as we're still cooking it with the, with the president, uh, Dr. Wari. I'm looking forward that in July, that in July, our baby will be here. The, our beautiful people will come and enjoy ourselves, where there will be small meeting, where it will be big meeting, but if it would be big meeting, actually we'll be having, we we'll would start working, cooking this thing, cooking it, and then bring the, the partners, either the, the government which can do, or the hotel which the contribution they can make, the companies which can put some small, small support. I will discuss with the doctor, but also with the video. Uh, I know it is breaking news for her, uh, but we shall continue this. She's a very hard person, very good lady, very jolly. Hey, what, let me stop from there. I, I, her husband may hear me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Eddie. Uh, Eddie is our president in uh, Rwanda. And uh, we feel very fortunate to have registered there. It's always important to register before we can do any operation there. So we're looking forward to expanding uh, uh, work and effort there. Um, Eddie's colleague is here. Um, 
Madam uh, Vadayan. Um, please, uh, let's hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Doctor. Uh, and thank you so much, uh, all participants, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, I think most of the thing I wanted to say, Eddie just mentioned it. Uh, but I just want to um, to come on some point. Uh, uh, as Eddie said, in Rwanda, uh, uh, we have this thing of political will. So uh, on everything, on all the laws, uh, if you have a political will, uh, it's even easy for the people who want to, to, to work on any uh, agenda. So yeah, just to make sure and mention that uh, uh, we have a really uh, very, very uh, gender sensitive leaders, uh, especially the president of the Rwanda is a very, very gender sensitive. Uh, uh, we have even laws uh, which are in the place uh, to, to make sure, as you mentioned, uh, even in our constitution, they have to make sure 30% on all government institutions have to be women. Most of the time we even go beyond the 30%. Yeah, so uh, uh, only that's one help as a civil society organization to always come uh, to, to mention that, to make sure that how to, to empower women so they can be able to take those positions. The constitution may be there, uh, they, Laws may be there, but you don't get people really qualified to be to those positions. So as a civil society organization working on uh, women empowerment, we make sure we do programs, we do trainings to make sure women can do it. Women can do it. Yeah, we still have challenges, of course, uh, because, uh, because of the history, because of the culture, because of the... Uh, where people come from. So there, we still have those challenges as the, the other countries, but at least uh, as a civil society, you can freely really talk about this issue, these issues and get support. Uh, and uh, as um, Edi mentioned, uh, uh, maybe you talk about this uh, program, uh, 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 there is law, there is, a, there is a, um, the political will, but sometimes um, we lack this kind of standalone budget. You know, when you put laws, you put, uh, and there's no budget on need, we all know that it's really difficult to be implemented because we, we, we know that uh, uh, people, yes, has to be trained, but also, the government has to put budget on that. So uh, we still, we still, as women organization, working on see how governments really can put uh, like a standalone budget to uh, to implement all those uh, laws which are in place. Also, um, how to put on the how to make a, an action plan. You can have CEDO, you can have uh, all those other. Uh, resolution of the UA, like 1325, uh, 50, uh, 2250 for youth. But if there's no action plan on it, if there's no um, budget, if there's no monitoring, evaluation, how can you implement that? So uh, it's something which uh, maybe on these projects which we are planning to do, we can look on it and emphasize and, and uh, really uh, be practical. Yes, we have laws, we have, but how can we work together? How can we plan? And uh, which lease on land from the past and now what are we bringing on, on boards as new? So there's all those, uh, all those uh, uh, challenges which, which are still there, but uh, I, I really hope, uh, I, have, uh, I have confidence that uh, these projects, uh, uh, we will be able to really to see uh, where the challenge really is and try to fix it. Yeah, yes, uh, I think, yeah, the Rwanda is really progressive. Uh, we know that uh, even in terms of technologies, Rwanda is really 
uh, putting more effort on using technology on, in sustainable economic. But again, by using those technology, internet, we, we face this kind of abuse. Uh, you can be you, you are getting abused through the internet through the technology and to, and women who are trying to to advocate for others they they find themselves humiliated on internet so there's a lot of things which uh, this program which we are planning to do together can can come and fix and and really get um, uh, a uh, big impact on Rwanda so uh, I'm really working forward to see uh, you all in Kigali on the Women the River on July. Of course, I will be around uh, and I will be part of it. So uh, and uh, looking to, to continue working together through online on the other physical meeting to see how we can really uh, uh, bring the innovation, bring innovation and uh, uh, a looking positive uh, impact about the new projects. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so very much, but that's so beautiful. That's just wonderful. Thank you so very much. That's, uh, and I assure you that all the things that you're talking about are inclusive in the, uh, in the program. Uh, that's exactly why we created it, you know? Um, and, and due to also what uh, Lady Terry was talking about earlier, I think it's important for us to put in perspective that uh, since the UN adopted the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, this is a state of concept, this was in uh, uh, September 3rd, uh, 1981. Of course, as mentioned, 189 countries have ratified it. Uh, but in all comparison to the existing uh, multilateral treaties such as Again, the CEDAW, the Maputo, uh, which is widely being accepted and ratified by most African countries. The fact remains that more than 40 years have passed and the treaty has done, you know, uh, bismal to really improve women's rights or conditions for women in, in some or perhaps even most oppressive nations that have ratified it. So, for us, uh, you know, it, it's really important to consider what uh, the AVAWA brings to the table. The Anti-Violence Against Women Act, this AVAWA, is an effective and sustainable strategy for effective localization of the universal agenda on, on gender equality in Africa and beyond. So the AVAWA is complementary, of course, to CEDA, it's complementary to Maputo Protocol, the AVAWA, the DIVO and, and the AVAWA. Uh, it's, it's a self-determination procedure easily embraced in developing countries or developing societies and, and particularly designed again for uh, the African world. Uh, you know, that's especially because we, we have uh, the rural situation. Um, so, you know, we're especially also where the, the problem takes many shapes. Uh, our, our situation is now clear cut. So uh, I think uh, it, it's really important to, to understand it. Uh, Lady Vadan, I'm not sure if I already sent you the full program of the AVAWA. If I haven't, please forgive me. I am going to send it to you. I've just been so preoccupied. Uh, and that goes as well for Eddie. Um, so we're yeah. very glad that one. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. So we're very glad that Rwanda is on board. There's a whole lot of our plans for Rwanda. And I think that Rwanda can lead uh, in this area and, and be exemplary in how things could work in other African nations. So I, I, we're really looking forward uh, to effectuating our in, in Rwanda. And so um, we have Ghana present. Um, I'm not sure if um, Auntie Esther is here, but I know that uh, Sister Esther um, is here. So uh, we would like to hear from Sister Esther uh, as well as uh, from Jessica, who is familiar uh, with this concept. So, um, so Sister Esther, uh, you know that we are going to be pushing to make this happen in Accra. And since you're based in Accra, uh, we think that you are able to uh, reach out to communities. 
So the, the concept of developing a database, a directory, of course, that's something we're going to do with technology and so on. But again, how do we connect that to the community? Uh, how do we begin to uh, build trust uh, in, in, in communities with women that need these services? Um, as for the act itself, we're going to be working with FIDA Ghana, and uh, we'll be talking to Lady Ukweme in a few. But I, uh, I want you to please just reassure us on uh, your vision as to how uh, working in Ghana uh, would be, what the challenges are and what the opportunities are and what we need to do. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's indeed a great and a refreshing time discussing views as to how to advance um, the well-being of women. And uh, we in Accra here, I always say that Accra being the capital city, number one, Accra being the hub of a lot of development, number two, Accra being the seat of government, a lot of the time people think everything is okay. But you reach out to a lot of communities out there and uh, it's so it's so devastating so appalling with a numerous as dr wally said earlier on ghana has one of the best constitutional voices for women but yet it's on paper there are a lot of institutions out there that claim to advocate for the well being of women. It's all about seminars. It's all about uh, social media noise making. But when you go out there on the field, violence against women in various forms persists. So I believe Avawa coming in at this time is very strategic. It's very timing for women. For me, when I go out there and I see all these things, I'm like, so what are we doing? So I believe this organization has come at the right time for women who are silently crying. So for us in the greater Accra region, it's a wake up call, listening to the view shared by our brethren out there, it's a wake up call for Accra. We should break out of the status quo, the complacency that we have one of the best constitution, Accra is the seat of government, Accra is the hub of whatever, it's a clarion call. And I, I, I wouldn't promise that much to add to the already existing in quotes noise that people are making about women advancement. But we are going to take on and the views shared by other people, the practical work being done on the field out there. And we'll reach out to women. And the next time we meet, we will surely have testimonials to prove that indeed it's not about mere talk, but it's about work and lives being imparted. So that's what I have for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Esther. Thank you so very much. That's very promising. So uh, we have our work cut out for us in Accra. Um, the CSW is coming up in March. And I would have returned to the United States at that time. Uh, that means that uh, we are going to be having um, a CSW, uh, possibly a hybrid uh, version of the program. And we will be talking about uh, of our, uh, in, in more details. Uh, and uh, as uh, that's what we're going to be presenting again um, at this CSW especially the part of technology 
when we're talking about a part of technology, ours is to make sure that services can be delivered to women. So we're talking about apps, phone apps, electronic systems of making sure that uh, all the needs are available. Uh, we are looking into the apps in such a way that we could build some security features in there that's going to ensure protection of women. That is, a woman is in um, an emergency situation, there's a way to alert or, or connect to help. Uh, these are the things that we are going to be putting in this uh, uh, app. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the Ghanaian government have also started some type of database for um, for uh, uh, for violence against women. Uh, what I have seen so far, uh, I think that there is room, a large room for improvement. And that's where we come in, uh, that we can make this more encompassing, make it more detailed, uh, make it more efficient. But I think that we would have uh, good support. So um, let's hear also from um, uh, Lady Jessica Botema Latte. Jessica, please. Is Jessica present? If you're present, don't forget to unmute. Uh, okay, if not, uh, we will go forward. I think Auntie Esther is not present. So uh, we'll, since much of what we are doing is predicated on law and act, uh, Lady Ukweme, who is our legal advisor, is here. Uh, it would be good to hear from her what she thinks, uh, how, how uh, we can begin to uh, make this happen with uh, CEDO. The idea is, of course, to sit down with CEDO and uh, craft a bill. And then together with CEDAW, uh, tender this bill to uh, the parliament and uh, move it through the house. Uh, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, that may include some lobbying, uh, may include some whatever the process is. Uh, we are hoping to get some resources in order to move this forward. So it would be good to hear from, uh, of course, the readiness of FIDO, experience of FIDO in this area. Thank you, Lady Ukweme, please. I'll meet yourself and share with us your thoughts. Thank you. Please don't forget to unmute. Okay. Um, I see that uh, Lady Ukweme is perhaps away from the microphone as she cannot hear us. So uh, in that regard, uh, I would, bef I'm not, I think uh, our representative from Nigeria is here. This is our country director from Nigeria. Uh, Mrs. Dorcas, if you can speak, uh, please uh, let's hear from you. And I am hoping that uh, Chief Mrs. is also around and maybe she can share with us. Uh, Nigeria is a very difficult uh, area when it comes to this particular issue. Um, it's unfortunate because there's some wonderful, powerful women in Nigeria, but uh, I think that the situation there drowns uh, much of the voices. Uh, the, the, the powerful women in Nigeria are very powerful. I mean, the, the richest African woman is a Nigerian. Uh, however, we still know that so many women are under serious duress and are not able to optimize their humanity on many levels. Uh, there's so much violence going on and we need to make sure that they have uh, gender-backed legislation to uh, ensure their safety, both at home and in public sphere, as well as in work areas. So Mrs. Dockers, if you're able to speak, please unmute and speak. Uh, and if not, uh, we will go to 
um, uh, very precious uh, Nana, Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen, you have seen and have read through the whole of our concept. Now you're in the Caribbean. With your experience in Africa, I know you would help to uh, mediate and, and move uh, this across the network of all the uh, uh, people in, in, uh, that we're working with and how we are moving this underground in Africa, especially between Ghana, Nigeria, and Rwanda. So you know that we are introducing the bill in Ghana, uh, in Rwanda first, in the first year. Second year, we are going to be introducing it in Ghana. And the third year, we're going to be introducing it in, in Ghana. That means that we would have enough time to learn through the process of Rwanda, which we believe is going to be uh, easiest, and then Ghana, which we think is going to be easier, and Nigeria, which we think uh, we will cross our fingers to make sure that we succeed. Uh, a big win in Nigeria is it's not only for the women in Nigeria who are more than 100 million, but also for the men in Nigeria. Uh, so with the combined population of uh, more than 200 million, we would be, we would have done something great for this generation and the generations thereafter. So what we have in our hands is something uh, that is remarkable. And uh, we, we really hope that, uh, uh, you know, we succeed. So please, um, Nana, Dr. Chen, kindly say uh, what your thoughts are. Thank you. Well, tap greetings, everyone. I would first and foremost just say that you've covered quite a bit of information and provided a significant amount of detail in areas that what I was asked to do initially was really around the research and the analytical component of the of our program and initiative, or maybe I should call it more like a campaign. It feels more like a movement. It's not just a particular singular project. And the intention as it was presented to us originally was for it to be in Ghana and Nigeria. And the invitation to expand it into Rwanda ex provided another layer of how important it is for, while I sit in a space in the Caribbean, yes, and while I sit in a space in the Caribbean that is tied also to the continental US and, and the wider Americas, it allows for us to authentically utilize this whole initiative to move in the direction to really have women more involved, more engaged in spaces of leadership and bringing our voice in action into this whole movement initiative campaign, right? And a lot of what transpired even in uh, preparing for various proposal applications to ensure that we have sustainable funding. I really concur with the sister queen that was mentioning how important it is for us to move beyond the wonderful resolutions and the significant announcements and declarations, whether it's an international decade or just a year, and moving it into a space where we have the sustainable, and I like that term sustainable because it's not just to get money for the project, it's to have money for the project and for it to be sustained and maintained efficiently and effectively. And with principles being at the center of how we engage in these particular programs. So part of what I'm bringing is just my skills, talents and expertise around project management, fund development and grant management. Proposal writing, yes. However, I've learned to teach younger others to do a lot of that engaging proposal writing. And I'm very focused on making sure that the standards of excellence and how we implement these different programs and provide significant fund development, not just fundraising, but fund development in that regard is brought to these particular movements, campaigns, and projects therein. And also ensuring that while our brothers are very supportive, you know, and that has been very apparent in what you've shared here in Nana, Dr. Wale Idris Ajibade, and others, you know, His Royal Highness, who was here earlier and as as well as the brethren from the from Rwanda, it's very critical that our women's voices in action and in the developmental 
strategic process are really integrated. And I will locate some documents that were shared with us by one of the elders of, of African views. You mentioned her earlier, and that's none other than Dr. Beryl Bickman, you know, coming out of the Netherlands via Suriname, et cetera. It's very important that we look at, she spends a significant amount of time helping us navigate like what's going on in these different international bodies as well. And anyone else that has that information, it will facilitate the success of any proposal that we submit. That way we don't have question. We have a very competitive proposal and a very competitive team that is able to implement because that's the issue that comes up when we make these applications. What is our capacity to be successful? And as long as we can show without a shadow of a doubt, which we can, that we have the capacity to do so, then we'll be very successful. And that way resources, funding will not be an issue and we can implement very progressive initiatives movements, campaigns that are institutionalized, and then the governments will see it as an asset for them, and they too will support, you know, for policy development, etc. I hope I've covered what you desired for me to share. Amazing. Thank and you. I definitely give greetings to everyone and blessings. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's why we are relying on you for your guidance here, and uh, that uh, you're able to help manage the whole uh, spectrum, making sure that things work accordingly, and that we have integrity in our work. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you, you mentioned that we need to show that we are capable uh, and I think that's the exercise that we are doing here. Uh, I know that we have reached out to the best that we can find. Um, uh, what we need to is to be more coherent. I know this meeting was very short noticed, uh, but again, uh, this is a precursor to many more meetings that we're going to be having. Uh, and uh, I think whether we like it or not, we need to demonstrate our capability uh, for understanding this project as well as believing in it and making sure that we can execute it accordingly. Thank you very much, Nana. Thank you. We can't wait to have you in Ghana. We're looking forward to that as well as Rwanda and Nigeria and many other places that we are going to be uh, going together. Thank you. And on a quick note, um, let me quickly introduce you to Nana Otu. Nana Otu, please meet um, Dr. Chen. Uh, we've been trying to facilitate this meeting for a while. She's been saying hello to you and you never responded. So now, now to please respond to <laughs> Dr. Chen Zero, please. <laughs> it appears whenever I'm in Ghana, I end up meeting a wide variety of royals and persons that are doing significant work. And I just have not had the honor and privilege to meet you personally, but we've been in similar circles. So for that, I'm very grateful, Nana, or to that thing. I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to the direct. But in the meantime, I really give thanks for this opportunity in this virtual space. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Our dear sister, we thank you for coming to join us on this platform. And I'm the president in Ghana. My name is Nana Otulati, a Kwamuhine of Boma Genasi, a ruler in Ahafu region. Well, uh, I and Dr. Wally have been together for some years now. And as you are all aware, when we are even having this program, he's in Ghana here. And we are doing everything together. We have been here for some time now. And so shall we hope all of you on this platform, all over the world, on this universe, everybody can come to Ghana. And I'm ready to 
to receive you in a spirit of peace and harmony. And I know our heritage continues unabated. I'm happy to receive all of you whenever you want to come. And uh, Dr. Wally can testify that whoever comes to Ghana feel at home and you may not even want to go back because Ghana is Ghana. In, in this all that we are doing, our main aim is spirit of peace and prosperity that uh, heritage, uh, our forefathers won our heritage for us. So whatever the case may be, we are all together. And today's topic is Avawa. We are all happy that Dr. Wale was able to put this package together and bring it on board. And I will also say that some of these things especially begins at home. Parents must able to take good care of their children, especially girls. The way you train them, especially on the adolescent age, if you are not able to take good care of them, they will go out there for people to train them for you, which will not lead, if you are not lucky, it won't lead to anywhere, any success. But some people are lucky, people can adapt them and train them well. But most of them are not um, safe out there without parental guidance. So all that I will try to say on this platform is that parents, let's guide our children. Let's get closer to them. Give them formal and informal education so that they can move through today's world confidently that they will not fall into victim on this uh, 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 act. I also urge that um, <clears throat> you should train them in a way that they will have hope. They will trust in themselves to move through today's world confidently, like I said earlier on. If you are able to give them trade or good education in a higher level, nobody can deceive them because they will, they, they will always be busy on their shadows that no one can you know, frustrate them, tell them they should come for this and that, and they win their hearts to give them something that will not help them at, at the end of the day to take them into trouble. So this is what I will say, but um, we don't have to let them go through some traumas because sometimes it's not their fault, especially when the, one of the parents are not there, especially the men, when they lost their, their fathers. There is this woman in Ghana here. I think it was early this year. He had two children and all the two children are fatherless. And at a point of time, he tried to kill the two children and kill himself. So I will urge all of you, if you are any <clears throat> anywhere and you realize that you, you should be intuitive and find out in your area if something is going on and you think the people there are in trauma or they are not happy, just intervene. 
and give them some counseling. And then let the authorities know that if you are not capable to help the person or the people, when the authorities get to know it, they will put their heads together and help the person. It is better than the person will lose his life or another life. So this is what I'm trying to uh, say across on this platform. When we are able to empower others and they have hope, they can live peacefully and they will not kill themselves because of some trauma they go in. So I will end up here. And like I tell you, I, I said earlier before, you can always come to Ghana and help with whatever we are doing. And we are always, we shall always embrace you. And Ghana is your second home. Thank you. Beautiful, Nana. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. I can attest to it, as Nana, uh, that uh, Ghana is uh, is home. Um, it's um, I've met some of the loveliest people here. I'm very proud uh, to know. So many wonderful Ghanaians, and just very pleased with uh, the concept of Aquaba is uh, is taken very seriously here, and it, it's it's well meant. So <clears throat> we're looking forward to many of you in diaspora, Dr. Remy. I hope you can hear what's been said. Uh, I've been urging you to come to Ghana, so I hope, I hope you get very prepared to come. You're going to love it here. Um, so Nana spoke a lot about education, and uh, this is one of the things that uh, we uh, we took pride on uh, in, in making sure that uh, uh, you know we, we promote education of rural women. I'll share my screen uh, just briefly to show you uh, the, uh, to show you what I mean by that. Uh, when... Excuse me, Baba. Just yeah. a break, one, one moment, Nana. Yeah. I, I do have to request most humbly to take leave because I have another appointment and I it, it started already and they're looking for me. So oh, I just nice. want to just give my regards to everyone and just yeah. look forward. I put my email in the chat so persons we can at least sustain a relationship in between now and the next meeting. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. Any any uh, final comment you want to add, uh, please go ahead and do so. Okay, my so. final comment is just for us to be able to navigate the best possible manner in which we can work together and the existing platforms and frameworks that persons are using, let's begin to percolate so that we can actually meet with some success to establish a sustainable fund for the development of these particular movements, initiatives, and the programs there. And I'm very much so looking forward to being part of this circle continuously, specifically in Ghana and Nigeria and Rwanda. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention, and I'll put that in the chat as well, the women's empowerment initiative in Rwanda, really working very closely with a number of our partners inside of African views. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much for that, Nana. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, all right. Um, thank you uh, so, so very much. Uh, we are... Uh, all right, so I was uh, going to thank you, thank you, and uh, we'll speak later. Thank you, please. Thank you very much. Um, so we we have uh, this education program that has worked. Uh, we, we executed it in Senegal, in Tanzania, and in Nigeria. And you can see that it's an adult reading program. And what's good about this program that it was our initiative and we were able to get the local government to embrace it. So you can see uh, 
that uh, books were published for you know reading and learning. Uh, also, you know, if we're going to be uh, using some form of um, electronic system, we have to teach the uh, we have to teach the um, uh, we have to teach the uh, the women how to some of course some of them not all of them obviously but we have to teach them how to uh, use it. So there's going to be an education program uh, as a added component to our um, whether it's learning to read, whether it's uh, managing money, whether it's doing business, uh, you know, whatever it is necessary in that community, uh, we want to make sure that we're able to provide that support, that type of assistance, uh, whether through us directly or uh, maybe uh, through a partner, um, CSO or WROs and things like that. Um, again, this worked very well in the past. We were able to do it with local governments. And I can imagine us being able to, to do that, continue to do that here. Uh, we have really good strategies that works. Uh, Nana and I were in the village recently. and We thought of having movie nights uh, for young people. Uh, something that they're very excited about. Uh, and through that, you can imagine what we can do, uh, just providing them that type of uh, recreational activity uh, where they can, we can talk about what they understand, what they, you know, discuss with them. And through that, you can imagine we can educate in, in many ways. So while on education, I would like Dr. Remy, uh, who's an advisor in this area, to uh, please share something with us before we uh, close. Um, but one second, Dr. Remy, before you do that, while we're still in, in Ghana, um, I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge um, uh, uh, Lady Doladam. I hope she's still here. Yes, Princess Doladam uh, is here with us. Uh, Princess Doladam is from the Volta region, um, Deladem uh, Soga. Um, uh, we just met recently and I was so impressed with her vision. Uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, uh, she can understand uh, what we're doing and be, you want to be part of it. And maybe uh, we need someone who could help move this type of program in the Volta region where it is so, so necessary. So Dr. Amy, before you quickly, let's just uh, hear from uh, Princess Deladam, please. Can you please? Yes, good evening to yes. you all. Um, all right, so I have heard everything and uh, I do have something to say about um, the initiative, I feel like it's also very paramount to create awareness, not only to the women, but to the men, and as well as to the boys, um, as they're growing, when their fathers are not available in the lives of the children, both men or boys and girls, it takes an impact and it becomes a cycle where you have boys who turn into thieves or like uh, they turn into like ghetto boys and they become a bad influence into the, in the community. And then you have the girls who also end up getting into other things which are not you know, morally right. Um, so when we're able to curve that in their adolescent age by creating some form of awareness and letting them know that, okay, we're, the genders are both equal. You have to treat each other fairly. Um, what a man can do, a woman can also do. Giving them that kind of um, gender understanding or gender awareness at an early age will be able to curve these kind of abusive ways which are traditionally being um, put or placed into their mind from a young age. So that is my main um, issue, is the traditional or so social um, influence in 
in the lives of people, especially here in Africa or in Ghana. Um, the Volta region are very, the people in the Volta region have a very traditional or cultural approach in the way they do things. So um, once you're able to let them know or create that form of awareness, because they really don't have that form of awareness. So once you're able to give them that form of awareness, you'll be able to trigger something and hopefully we'll be able to mold and change the narrative and give them the right direction on how to treat women. Thank you. Oh, thank you so Hello. very much. Thank yeah. you. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. I hope to follow up with you on this conversation and see uh, how we can again extend uh, the program to that area. Um, we, we have a very robust program for uh, boys um, and men. Uh, as a matter of fact, we created uh, gender harmony as a concept for a soft landing uh, for uh, getting men to support um, women initiatives, uh, getting male to support uh, female initiatives. And um, it's, 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 it works very well. So we'd be very glad to uh, talk about that and how we can uh, extend it. This is part of the Avawa. You can imagine the Avawa has so many concepts behind it. It really is a catch uh, all for uh, this type of issues. Uh, and since there are so many other organizations involved, uh, the capacity is very elastic. So thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you as well. And I hope that we'll be able to accomplish so much more in the near future. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, Dr. Remy, prepare yourself. Uh, I want you to, it's, is uh, Lady Upeme Okon available? If you are, please unmute and uh, uh, and speak uh, anytime that you are able to. Otherwise, I'm going to ask uh, Querit in Uganda to say a few words. Uh, Querit is a student at a university in Uganda. She's doing some remarkable work. Uh, maybe she wants to talk about it, but I would like us to just hear briefly from her because she might uh, uh, be uh, part of our program uh, CSW uh, coming up. So, Querit, please introduce yourself quickly. Let's... Don't forget to unmute. I hear something. Are you able to speak? Oh, Lady Ukwemi is also here. Okay, um, who wants to go first? Uh, I think maybe uh, Lady Ukwemi, prepare yourself, let Query speak and then, because you're going to speak a little longer. So let uh, Query speak quickly and then we'll come to you. Thank you. Go ahead, Kurt. Hello? Oh, okay. I think she got bumped out. Uh, in that case, Lady Upeme, you have the floor. Uh Thank you. Uh, uh, greetings. Uh, my name is Ukweme Okon. Uh, I am a lawyer and also an uh, activist. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for the organization. Uh, I'm speaking from the angle of uh, the legal angle. Uh, I'm just going to summarize. I won't go into all the details, but importantly, uh, we need to foster collaboration, partnerships, sustainable partnerships is really important for uh, what we need to achieve in terms of uh, 
protecting, not just protecting, but also enforcing uh, the rights of uh, women and children. Uh, as a lawyer, I am also a member of the International Federation of Women Lawyers. And the goals of the organization, FIDA, FIDA is the acronym for International Federation of Women Lawyers, and FIDA has chapters, global chapters in many countries. But the common goal of FIDA is to promote, protect, and preserve the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of women and children. We have, uh, there is FIDA in the US, there's FIDA in Nigeria, there's FIDA in many countries. And these goals relate to the goals and objectives of African Jews organization. These are worthy goals. These are goals that we can sustain through partnerships. And I am uh, proposing that we have, we, we forge the partnerships with partners who are who have the zeal, who are available to ensure that we have this common uh, collective uh, work and collective success. Because the work is huge. It's a global assignment. Uh, whatever it is that we are doing, is, it has a global reach. So I urge us to continue to seek these partners and not just seeking them, let's sustain the partnerships Let's see how we can have an extensive reach and together, together we can achieve our common goals. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Excellent, thank you. Um, I want to mention that we spoke earlier about the legal aspect of uh, the Avaur. As you know, we are looking forward to uh, partner with FIDA to help uh, conceptualize a bill that we are going to bring forward to the floor. Uh, we intend, we have three year spans of work and we, at least for, for this particular project in three countries. So we want to introduce to, um, so we, we want to be able to introduce the bill onto the floor in Rwanda in the first year. Uh, the second year would be Ghana, and the third year would be uh, Nigeria. I will be sending you the whole package as well as everybody else uh, working on their program with us. I will send you the whole package, uh, which entails the questionnaire, et cetera. Um, so you have a good overview. I also uh, want us to arrange a CSW meeting where we can discuss this in detail. Um, to to look at you know what is probable and you know uh, what is necessary and uh, we have very very strong partnership especially the Nigerian counterpart uh, bringing some wonderful uh, rooster of um, women organizations to the table. I wish that. Uh, uh, Nana uh, Anita Kurevido is here uh, to, to explain details of this also. I know that uh, Mrs. Dokas is currently engaged in a meeting, but I, I know that they, they are listening to us as well. But it would be good uh, if they were able to speak. If not, I just- Thank you, you, Dr. Wabi. You are! <laughs> Bravo. Please, please, please take the floor. I <laughs> for many hours. But right now I am free, I was at an event. So thank you so much, Dr. Wally, for your vision and for being a he for she, because the matter for women, you have put it so much in your heart and we really appreciate you. Thank you. And good evening, all the other ladies and gentlemen on board this discussion. I've listened to some of you. It's been so wonderful. We really need to make sure that the act, we turn it into a bill and drive it all over Africa for women to be more emancipated. Thank you so much.
Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Excellent. So, uh, query. I know we are uh, exhausted our time limit here, but uh, please, uh, query. Do you have a minute? Are you able to speak? Is your network stable now? Okay, maybe not. All right. So. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else who has not spoken. However, the floor is open if you want to speak before we go to the closing. I'm just waiting to deliver to Dr. Remy, who is going to give us a, a closing remark. Uh, but if anybody wants to have something to say, uh, this is a good time to say it before we yield to Dr. Remy. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> OK. So is Query able to speak? Query, if you're able to speak, uh, do unmute yourself and speak, please. You know, um, I have spent the last. I can, uh, if I may. Yes, yes, go ahead, please. Add, can I go ahead? Yes, please. Okay, if I may add, I have the National Coordinator of Digital Network for Women Empowerment, you know, on this discussion, Mrs. Lizzie Ibe. So. She's here. So if she wants to say just one or two things on digital network for women. Um, that that yeah, is terrific. She is here. Please, I'm very happy to let you know African Views International, that African Views Nigeria would be very happy to bring on board so many of our women organizations. And we have women in, I mean, Renewable Energy Association. We have women in Sustainable Power, African Network. But the mother of them all, that is the Association of Nigerian Women Business Network, you know, they are really the main partner of this AVAWA with African Views Nigeria chapter. They were not able to get the information in good time. That's why they are not here now. They would have loved to be here. But I believe the next meeting we are going to have, we need to give them at least four, you know, at least one week notice so that we can articulate all the women organizations, you know, to work on the theme of the meeting and be able to discuss more intelligently with their intellectual properties at their best at the next meeting. So Mr. CB, if you want to introduce yourself, please do so quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Mississippi, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Avawa has four components. The act is the first and the most important one. Uh, Mississippi, okay, go ahead. The, the second one is the directory. Mrs. So I think Elizabeth, Mississippi... I know you are there. Unmute yourself yeah, and I'll introduce mute yourself. <laughs> Please speak. Hello? Hello? Hey, Kobina, you still, I, you know, I, oh dear, Kobina, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time. And I, got, I got my hands up. So while we're waiting for yes. um, our, yes. our colleagues to join in, I would like to make a point. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Wale, and thank you very much, um, Nana Otulate, for the initiative that you're making uh, from the perspective of the Ghana approach. I look forward to say that um, the United Nations Youth Association is a platform that we believe confidently that it's a power platform for young people. Um, our, our VAWA is something that I believe that has a lot to do with young people. And to oh, well, especially I'm sorry, promote it. I think maybe. <laughs> She is not just um she's not 
at the, I don't know how to explain it, but her, her name is there on the attendance list. So you can go ahead, please. Maybe later she will join. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, my interest is the area of mobilization for young people to support the decentralization of uh, Sidao and um, Avawa. I believe very well that young people have a key role to play in the area of advocacy, in the area of sensitization, in the area of getting actually people hands on in this particular approach. So I look forward to getting UNYA to support the effort and to also make many more young people understand what it is that is happening. We already have some projects already coming up in terms of some virtual engagements of this nature. And I look forward to getting resource persons from this team that could speak to our young people to better understand the dynamics of what Avawa actually has to offer and how best they can also position themselves. I will use this opportunity to commend all the key stakeholders who are making this initiative very much possible. And kudos to Africa Views. We look forward to do more with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kofi. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, accept my apologies. I, uh, uh, you know, I, I uh, skipped uh, introducing you properly. I think I mentioned, but I wasn't, and uh, I should have included you also in uh, uh, in the preview. But thank you for taking the initiative. I trusted that you would do that, and I'm glad that you did. So thank you very much. Um, you know, the the Avawa is very important for the youth. Um, I'm going to send you links on the website of all the information. So I want you to study it and see how uh, we can engage people, uh, especially in Ghana, uh, where you are. I would like to connect you with Lady Esther. Uh, Sister Esther uh, is going to be working in the Accra region and the greater Accra region. And I think, uh, I don't know what your reach is, but um, I think that uh, there could be a great deal of support because Accra is very big. And uh, also we would like to have uh, young people uh, especially in the technology area, uh, support the initiative of creating the directory and the app for Ghana, because each of these country is going to have its own directory. It's gonna have its own uh, app, electronic directory for the, uh, for the women. This is part of, the, of our system. And uh, so you can imagine creating the directory is one thing, uh, ensuring the usage of the directory and the ability of the women to be able to use uh, this system is very, very key. Uh, especially with the type of phones that they have, uh, you know, there's, and, and making sure that we can deliver through this uh, app uh, many type of educational system and information as well, and tools that's going to um, keep them empowered and, and uh, independent. So um, thank you very much. So we're going to be talking a lot more. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Kabila. I believe that Querit is now here. I'm going to ask her to please unmute and speak if she's able to. Querit? Yes, um, can, can I? Yes, I... yes. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I'm Querit, sir. We can't hear you. I think the network is still a problem. We cannot hear you. Are you speaking? So sorry that. Uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. Query. Okay. I think she's having network problem. You know, this is one thing I've learned um, since I've spent so so long uh, in Africa uh, compared to prior coming here. I just spent like one week and I go back two weeks and so on. But now having spent two months, uh, more than two months in Africa, I realized the challenges we have with internet and data system. I think it's too expensive. It's, it's you know, I think, uh, 
we need to have a word with the government and the uh, the service providers. All these uh, internet service providers, I think, are, are, are not fair to the people. We need a consumer system uh, that is well monitored, uh, that looks after the interest of the people. This is how they do it in the United States, and I see no reason why we don't have one in Africa. We just let ourselves be taken by any company that provides any kind of public service, and they do with us what they want. I, I don't think that's fair. So I do understand that. Aquarius, if you're able to speak, go ahead, please, and speak. If not, I will, will, will yield to uh, Mrs. Elizabeth. If you're able to speak, Mrs. Elizabeth, please uh, unmute and speak. Uh, otherwise, we'll go to uh, Dr. Remy for the final work. She's been listening so attentively, and she's able to capture everything. So query it. If no response from Querit and no response from Mrs. Elizabeth, I would recommend that we go to Dr. Remy. Dr. Remy, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wally. Um, good afternoon again um, to everyone from New York City. Um, of course, you know, I've been listening uh, from the beginning and I did join the meeting so excited way before the time because I thought it was going to start at uh, 10 a.m. New York time and um, I scared Dr. Wally a little bit, but, you know, it's, I was just so excited um, to want to participate this morning. So I thank everyone for um, the contributions. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Wally, the man amongst all the women. Uh, you know, the, the reason, this is the, the epitome of, you know, the contributions of men and boys in alleviating the plight of women, um, the role of men and boys in contributing to gender equality and not only equality, but gender equity. So I thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wally, for all you've been doing and all you have done. And thank you to all the gentlemen in the room. Um, the importance of this avowa, um, you know, should be taken not lightly by everyone on this platform. So I implore everyone to please do your utmost best to um, gather as much um, women, men, boys, girls together to be able to learn um, about this um, information, you know, the information included in the Avawa Act. Um, so much has happened around the world that updates need to be made to conventions, updates needs to be made to, um, you know, laws, updates need to different agreements. And if we're living past um, or, you know, if we're still living beyond, I mean, uh, in the past, we're not going to achieve what um, we're planning for the future, our own future, our children's future, our children's children's uh, future. Now, as you all know, education is very, very important to me. And part of the sustainable development goal number five is on education. At most, everyone around the world should have the most basic education, even if it's at the primary level. And we know that this is not the case around the world for most girls um, who still um, are beh uh, behind um, boys in their educational um, pursuits. So how do we get this message of anti-violence act to girls who you know, succumb to so many abuse, bullying, um, even to women who do not know how to read and um, they don't know what it contains. Let us try our best um, in various communities that we belong to on various platforms to continue to spread the message of the Anti-Violence Act against um, women so that, you know, before um, the timeline that uh, African views, Dr. Wally and uh, our comrades, I say comrades in Rwanda, um, have slated for July, um, we would have had enough, um, hello, Eddie, how are you? <laughs> we, 
we would have had enough um, opportunity to spread the message to various um, communities, to various individuals. This is not only the fight on behalf of women, we have to remember that as men and boys, we would not be um, here today if not for the women in our lives, if not for the women that have, uh, you know, giving birth to us, the ones that have nurtured us, taking care of us, most times in silence of their own pains and suffering that we don't even know what they're going through. So I want to thank African Views Organization. I want to thank um, everyone that has participated and contributed. Thank you so much for sharing um, the experiences from your countries, um, you know, from your communities, from your organizations. The sky is the limit. And this is just the beginning. And I want us to please put heads together, join hands together to make sure that this AVAWA Act, the Anti-Violence Act against, um, you know, violence against women, is not something that is a joke. It's something that we need to push forward. Uh, make sure that um, we have enough information because CSW is around the corner. Um, we need to ensure that we have enough uh, you know, information to get out there to everyone attending the CSW and of course, to take home with them when they're going back to their various um, locations. So with this, I wanna thank everyone again. And remember, education is knowledge and knowledge is power. And it's not only education for women, of course, they're the ones at the bottom, um, not only education for girls, because they're the ones who are left behind the most, but education and knowledge that empowers everyone to do the right thing um, in all facets and aspects of our daily lives. So with that, I want to thank you um, for being here today. And let's keep pushing this uh, information forward so that everybody will be informed and educated and empowered. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Remy. I think with that, we can adjourn uh, the meeting. Um, if no one has anything else to add, we will adjourn this meeting. We can follow up uh, with emails. I think everybody uh, can share their emails so uh, on the uh, chat. Uh, but at least now, I hope that we have a formed idea about the Anti-Violence Against Women. And I want to tell you that the Anti-Violence Against Women Act has a very, very good chance in the African world. And even you here, me here, all of us here have the capacity as well as the ability to make a change. So if we work together, I think uh, there is a great, a great chance that we could be able to move this into law and we'll get the type of support that we need um, once we believe and we work together towards it. I thank you. I wish you got speed uh, in everything that you do. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, we'll catch up and we'll inform you about the uh, Commission on the Status of Women coming up in March between, I believe, 6 to the, uh, the 15th or so. 6 um, to 17th. Yeah. 6 to the 17th? Yeah. Did you say? Okay. Six to seven. Yeah. Okay. Six to the seventh. Excellent. So yeah. So we will be able to uh, share the information, and uh, we will then plan a bigger of our meeting where we will it'll be another technical meeting for us to really make sure that we are able to represent the capacity that uh, Dr. Chenzira spoke about. Okay. Thank you very much, and I wish you. A lovely evening. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh -huh.